All right, so next section is going to go over the CAD export updates that have occurred in the last year um, and also focus on the demo of this feature as well. So the CAD export capability allows you to take the analytical surfaces in OpenVSP out to external tools. So you can import them into a CAD program, uh, import them into a, a program that can uh, mesh those surfaces for you, or CFD or FEA. Um, and before we did this work, um, over the last uh, two years or so with, with AFRL, the CAD export capabilities were untrimmed. And, and, open, and Rob just talked about the kind of differences between untrimmed and trimmed. So we had untrimmed step and IGIST capabilities, but what's been introduced more recently is the trimmed CAD capability, which intersects your components and outputs a watertight geometry representation. This also works for FEA parts, so structural entities, um, transparent surfaces, which are going to be disks and wakes, negative volumes, and subsurfaces. Um, subsurfaces, the, the capability is somewhat um, limited, but I'll explain that in a second. So the difference between trimmed and untrimmed for um, CAD export, so untrimmed, you're going to go through file, export, and click the untrimmed format. So untrimmed step, untrimmed IGIS structure. For trimmed, you're going to go through analysis, trim surface, intersect and export. If you're trying to get the entire model out, um, if you want to do a structural model, you'll go through analysis, FEA mesh, and then export CAD. So for the updates since last year um, in 3.22, some updates to the untrimmed CAD GUI. Uh, fixed some issues with labels not being uh, you know, copied over to the file format, uh, and then added some options for users in the trim surface GUI. So that includes the binary adaptive refinement tolerance control and the option to demote surfaces to cubics before they are intersected and exported. For the most part, you'll want to leave these alone unless you start experiencing issues with your export. Um, but the curve adapt adaptation tolerance, that will allow you to increase or decrease the number of points that are used to define those intersection curves. So that can sometimes help with the trimming algorithm if that parameter is adjusted. However, it is a relative tolerance, so it shouldn't be impacted by the scale of your model, but it is something to consider if you run into issues. Otherwise, in, in 3.22, there was an option added to exclude the OML when you're exporting a FEA structure model. On the right there, you can see the kind of different capabilities of uh, that can be exported in CAD. So you can do wakes, so that allows you to Use an external meshing tool to create a mesh of a, a wake behind a, the um, sterling edge of a wing. You can do negative volumes. So that's something Rob talked about in the last presentation as well. And I'll demonstrate that in a little bit here. And you can output a trim structured model. Right now, the limitations of this capability. So with FEA parts, those are trimmed against the skin, so the cutting plane is trimmed, but the actual skin is not broken at those intersections. I could uh, show that in a second here too. Um, the intersections between those FEA parts, those don't cause breaks in the surface as well. Similar with transparent surfaces and subsurface, those are all exported just as the surface curves. They're not used to break up the surface. In terms of the, the best practices with this feature, uh, always try to start small and work your way up. So uh, add a component, then try exporting, then add another component, try exporting. Just make sure you can export each individual additional component and uh, trim the model successfully 
before you just try doing the entire aircraft that you're modeling. Try to avoid intersections that can be difficult or at least look out for them. So things like uh, the intersection of two planar surfaces, um, there won't be a solution to that or coplanar solutions. So make sure you, you know, turn off your symmetry if you have a trying to model a, a vertical tail and you um, rotate the default wing without turning off symmetry. That will also cause the solver to fail. The terminal is used to output a couple of messages that um, can be used to check if there are any issues with the trimming operations. Um, I believe it'll say something along the lines of uh, failed to close loop or something along those lines. If you see anything like that or your model fails to open when you import it into an external tool, you might be able to make improvements just by moving things around a little bit. And you could also zoom in on the intersection curves um, in the GUI. You can see kind of an example in that, that image on the right there. If you zoom in on those blue curves, you'll be able to kind of see if there's anything that, that might jump out as odd, like a, a jagged intersection or, or something along those lines. For the structural model and, uh, export, it's a good idea to turn off symmetry if you can, because that'll avoid potential issues with the spar from the symmetric wing uh, failing to merge correctly and trim correctly with the, the spar on the other side. The trim CAD capability also works great, even if you just have a single component in your model. So just because it, it includes all that connectivity information in there, sometimes it could it work better um, than the untrimmed representation. So something to consider. Uh, even if you aren't doing any surface intersections, you could still use that tool to export a CAD model. Right, so I'll go ahead and jump into the demo next. Right, so let's see, go ahead and open up a, a model I've already generated um, just to save some time here. So uh, very basic airplane. So uh, just a pod with a, a main wing, a horizontal tail and a vertical tail, and I, I added some uh, subsurfaces in there as well. So first thing I'll do is I can show you the difference between the untrimmed and trimmed CAD export. So I'll start by untrimmed. I go to export and untrimmed step, untrimmed step struct, untrimmed IGIS and untrimmed IGIS struct. Go ahead and click untrimmed IGIS. And so for the untrimmed GUI, you can specify the length unit. So this is just what gets written into the file. So when you import it, the external program knows what scale your model is in. You can split subsurfaces. So um, you could turn this on or off to basically include those subsurface curves. Split UW constant subsurface. That allows you to place a U or W line subsurface and have it actually split the surface on there. And I'll demonstrate these in a second as well. You can omit the trailing edge surfaces. Just denote surface to cubic feature, which I explained earlier. And then you have an option to move props to the origin and export them from there instead of their absolute location. The last section on here is all information that gets written to the file. Um, so you can identify uh, different surfaces and things like that in your external program that you imported this CAD file to. So I'm going to call this untrimmed airplane. And that finished pretty quickly. I'll open up a free CAD here. And I'll load that I just file. And you can see if I turn on transparency that the wing is going through the fuselage 
and you have an untrimmed representation. Now instead, if I go to analysis, trim surfaces, this will name the file automatically based on the name of your model. So you can change the, the IGES or step export name if you like here. Um, but overall, this has similar uh, options as the untrimmed export in terms of the names that get written to file. For step files, you can represent as a BREP, um, so that's a solid representation or a shell representation. So that's something to try to if uh, certain programs are not working with the BREP representation. You can see if shell representation has things come out a little bit better. The step tolerance, which is available for untrimmed step exports too, that just gets written to the file and that controls how in the import process in your external program, how points are potentially merged when they're um, close together. If I go ahead and click this intersect and export button, that will go ahead and calculate all the intersection curves, generate boundary loops, and use that to connect everything together and trim the model. You can see on the display tab, if you'd like, you can turn on or off the display of the curves, the points, and you'll have the intersection curves and the, the borders of each surface. I pull up FreeCAD again. This is the, the IGES file again. Here I'll load up the, the step file so you can see it in point wise, um, which has some more information about uh, the naming conventions for all the, the surfaces. There you go. There's my IGES file. And you can see now. That your surfaces are trimmed. You have a single watertight representation. The subsurfaces were exported, but see how this surface is not split by that subsurface curve. We just export the subsurface edges as surface curves. That's just something to be aware of there. In FreeCAD, you can see how the different components in that, that file are named. They so have, in this case, the, the name, uh, or excuse me, the, the type of the entity, the ID of that component, the name of the component, and then the, the surface number. Next, I can show in FEA Mesh, how to export a structural model. So what I did here, hide this. Show. Let's take a look. I made two examples. Um, well, let's take a look at the, the main wing. So here, this is a little confusing because it's showing the subsurfaces in the FEA structural model and um, on the wing itself. So that's what that's showing there. I'm going to go ahead and turn off symmetry. I could click this export CAD button, or you can mesh the whole thing, and that will also still export to CAD if you have these export options selected. 
All right, so that finished. Open up that file. Recat as well. There we go. So we have that wing. We have the ribs and spars all trimmed. Turn on transparency. You can see that there. But similar to the limitation with subsurfaces, the, the, this section of the wing is not split by this rib. And the rib is not split by that spar. We just export those um, intersections as surface curves, but we don't at this time split the components. So just a, a limitation to be aware of. Right, and then next real quick, I can just show start a new model. Um, how to export a negative volume. So let's do a simple ellipse here. I could grab something like a pod. Change some of the angles here, move it around a little bit, and make it a little bit bigger. Now, so you see this pod is going through this ellipse. And if I come over to negative volume, now come to trim surfaces. And intersect and export. You should end up with a hole in the ellipse taken out of uh, taken out by this pod, negative volume. Checking the terminal to see if there's any error messages that pop up and none have. So go and see how it looks in FreeCAD. There you go. You have an ellipse with the hole poked through it from that that pod. So that's how those negative volumes work. You can get fairly more complex here, um, but this is just a, a very simple example to kind of show the the general concept. Are there any questions on any of the trimmed CAD capability updates uh, that anyone would like me to go over? Yeah, Justin, we've got one on the conferences I/O. How consistent are the surface names on the trimmed export for IGES and STEP files? As they vary things like design parameters, length, and span, do the exported surface names stay consistent? And I'm not sure what the trimmed stuff uses as the surface names, but yeah, I know so the untrimmed uses it differently. So why don't you just talk about those names? Yeah, so the overall things should stay the same as long as you're, um, you know, the general naming conventions should just stay the same, I should say. So here in, in point wise, you can see we have the entity name, then the ID of the component, which will never change. So this will only change if you're adding or removing new components or, or geometries. And then the name of the geometry, that shouldn't change as well. The split number or surface number, that will change based on the number of sections in your wing. Um, so th those are how the, the names are um, kind of set up and you could turn off or on, you know, the ID, the geom name, the main surface number or the split surface number, if you like. So if you're just varying a single parameter or two, um, for the most part, th these shouldn't change at all. So, if you vary a parameter enough, for example, <clears throat> that a fuselage becomes so fat that it entirely swallows the inboard portion of a wing and that portion no longer gets written out, then that surface will vanish entirely and it might change the numbering. But as Justin pointed out, if, if you go to the GUI in the export, um, if you pull that up real quick, yeah. Justin, um, 
the the options either for trimmed or untrimmed you know here where it says geom id geom name surface number and split number those options are and the delimiter are the comma delimited or something else that's really just about the surface name so if you're satisfied with just knowing the geom id or just the name and the name is whatever you've typed into this component then that's the only name that'll come through and it will be completely totally stable for parametric changes um, if you have two wings and you named them both wing and you want to be able to tell which one is which then turning on geom id will give each geom a unique thing likewise surface number that'll handle things like symmetry that'll separate the difference between a left wing and a right wing and then that split number is before we do an intersect or when we export a surface we split the entire geom along all of the feature lines so as long as your feature lines stay the same now some feature lines are detected by uh, an angle difference and so if you were varying skinning and you went from a perfectly smooth joint to something with a cusp with a corner then a feature line would appear and the split numbers would change to reflect that um, but you can basically depending on how verbose you want your name and how specific you can have a name that is very stable or a name that might vary some depending on other things yeah exactly great thank you rob 